Here's where we really start to have fun when we come to these accounting procedures, our assertions, what we're going to do, observation, inspection, inquiry, confirmation, right? Starting to sound familiar. Now, let's take a look. First off, if we are in the process, we're in the business of it in examining or inspecting, what are these going to be related to? Well, I'm going to say more so observation, which this is going to be witnessing a process or the existence of something, uh, generally more so related to possibly uh, tests of controls. We've also got the process of inspection. This is similar to observation. However, this is the process of choosing a sample of what was observed and then confirming something related to that. For communication, these two that we're going to do are inquiry and confirmation. Now, for inquiry, this is generally asking someone something. You need to be asking someone questions for it to be an inquiry, simply asking about anything. This could be inquiring about internal controls, inquiring about a specific transaction, literally anything. It could be inquiring of uh, the legal counsel, it could be inquiring of management, of random employees, of internal audit, board of directors, anyone there. Confirmation, in here, you don't necessarily need to talk to a third party. However, this is the confirming the existence of something with that third party, such as accounts receivable confirmations, bank confirmations. If we are trying to verify the accuracy of something, we are going to do one of the three. We are going to focus on recalculation, which is checking the accuracy of math. A simple way of doing this would be for interest expense, you take the outstanding balance of debt, multiply it by the time, multiply it by the interest rate. We've got reperformance. This is independently recreating a process, usually more so for test of controls, making sure that that internal control operates the way it was intended to. And then lastly, valuation. This is more so tied to, let's say, PP&E. I mean, there's many other accounts as well, but in confirming the correct values on the balance sheet, really confirming the correct values of any asset in the balance sheet, I would say is a good way to think about that. Lastly, for analysis, this is analytical procedures. Now, analytical procedures are broken out separately due to their nature of being different. Keep in mind the points we discussed and the requirements to use them or not. Analytical procedures being done during the planning phase are going to be simple analytical procedures. However, if they are done during the testing phase, they are considered substantive analytical procedures. This is ratio analysis and searching for unusual balances or unusual amounts or unusual activity, usually comparing two separate years or time periods. We're really ramping up the fun here. We've got our management assertions. Now, this is covered in our business cycles when we get to when we have cash cycle and revenue cycle and all of those, but never hurts to see it again. I would say take a good look, uh, get familiar with these. Like I said, again, this is extensively covered in those lessons. But for our assertions, management makes these assertions. They say they, the financial statements are complete, they're properly cut off, they're properly valued. The auditor is going to test these to make sure what management is asserting is correct. Now, the assertions related to the question, is everything properly included where it should be? I memorize, be familiar with this. For completeness, completeness is concerned with all transactions for the period being examined have been properly entered in the accounting period. An audit test for this regarding completeness of sales would be to sample shipments during the year and trace each source document to the books via the sales journal. A point to keep in mind that you can see on a SIM is completeness is usually associated with tracing. Tracing is a great way to do that because you are looking at the sample shipments. So you're looking at all the supporting documentation and making sure that it's reflected by a particular line in the journal entry. So that is a great way to test completeness, right? Makes sense because you're making sure that everything's properly included. How are you going to do that? You're going to check all of the documentation, make sure it's reflected. Next, we have cutoff. This is determining whether the transactions recorded have been recorded in the appropriate accounting period. We talked about this uh, bank cutoff statements with cash, with pretty much every account. Next, we have, are the amounts correct? I'm going to start from the bottom, similar to how I did in that lesson. Accuracy are more like errors. In this case, management followed gap, but simply messed up the process, and therefore the numbers were inaccurate. Not One's not more important than the other, but just different ways. These are all significant because we want to make sure the financial statements are accurate for you know, accurate in valuation, accurate in allocation, and accurate in accuracy. Allocation, this includes matters such as the inclusion of appropriate overhead amounts into inventory valuation. Did you properly capitalize or expense what you should have? Did you include fixed costs where they should be, whether those are capitalized or expensed, depending on the method you used? And for valuation, was the proper method correct in regard to gap? This is where we think, did we actually follow gap? Definitely something to consider. So for example, writing up land to current Market value is clearly not proper gaps. Like, are we following gaps methods for valuing inventory, for valuing every account? 
that is something to be concerned about when we see valuation. Let's talk about existence and occurrence. So transactions actually exist and have occurred. Existence is more associated with tests of details, substantive testing. Occurrence is more associated with tests of controls. For existence, this requires the auditors to confirm the physical existence of assets, liabilities, and equity accounts. And for occurrence, this is assessing control risk for purchases, as an example. You could vouch entries from the voucher register to supporting source documents. And we see that vouching is going to be more associated with occurrence. This completeness is more concerned with, is it understated because you didn't completely include everything? Whereas occurrence is concerned with, are all of the, let's say, revenue entries you made, did they actually occur? So this is concerned with overstatement. I would make a note there about that. And vouching is concerned with overstatement because we're looking at all of the entries that were made and seeing if we can find real documentation to prove that it actually happened. Next up, are the assets listed fully owned and are all debts owed actually listed out? Rights and obligations, rights have to do with the assets, obligations have to do with the liabilities. Does the entity have the rights to all assets listed on the balance sheet, more so associated with pledging collateral? And then does the entity include all liabilities in the balance sheet that reflect an outstanding obligation? Are we not including anything that we do owe and just hiding it so we look better like we don't have as much debt? Lastly here, are the financial statements items classified and presented in a useful way for the users? Can a reasonable user of the financial statements understand and read them and kind of see what's going on within the company? This is going to be pretty important because, well, if all the numbers are correct and if everything else is correct on the financial statements, but they're presented in a way that's confusing to the users, well, that doesn't really help anyone. Our two assertions here are understandability of presentation and classification. Understandability is concerned with information included in the financial statements has been appropriately presented and is clearly understandable. Classification concerned with possibly current versus non-current balance sheet items being properly classified the way. Hey there, are you ready to not only pass your CPA exams, but truly understand and enjoy the material while studying? I know it seems impossible, right? Especially to enjoy the material? We'll do it together. Tap into the power of cpa.examprep.ai, where we've got personalized quizzes, multiple choice questions, memorization guides, flashcards, simulations, all tailored to your learning. Our adaptive study planning puts you on the fastest path to success and lifts you back up if you fall behind. Avoid wasting your precious time and money attempting an exam with a low chance of passing because who wants that? We want to get you through this process as quick as possible. Our exam readiness prediction lets you walk in with confidence knowing that you're prepared for success on exam day. Thankfully, there's no payment method needed to get started. So why don't you come join us? Visit cpa.examprep.ai and let's achieve your exam success together.